this discussion probably is the first time anybody has ever heard much about the two centers. Yeah. But I've, uh, Bren and I traveled through Europe 50 years ago mm -hmm. together. We spent a month. Yeah. Well, I know him well. Yeah. And I haven't, last time I saw him was at the Ray Watson function. Right. And, you know, I said, he doesn't like to be called Don, Donald. Right. I said, I'll see you in another 40 years. And I was walking out of the event and he yelled across the lawn. He says, don't forget, in 40 years, we're going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> see, I have, a, I have a theory about art and culture, and tell me if I'm way off. So in the Orange County Museum of Art is in Newport Harbor discussions with Renzo Piano, and there's yeah. you know, a lot that went on with the board, and it got sort of contentious. And, and I think that what he realized at that point is that if he turns part of the land over to a, basically a nonprofit, non he loses control. And the Sagerstroms have done very well with Sagerstrom Hall, and it's an independent, iconic, but there also have been disputes. So it is true that you know you lose some control over what happens with what used to be your property when you donate land, and it might be just... Henry's problem was he couldn't give up quite as much control as he wanted to because he wanted a few more dollars other than his own flowing into some yeah. of those cultural projects. Well, no, no, you know, it's... He, I grew up in Pasadena. Pasadena is a cultural center. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm very much aware of the theater, the art, Pasadena Playhouse. I mean, it, it was a fabulous place to grow right. up. We had everything. And uh, it, it's not that, it, it, part of it is the landlocked uh, situation that uh, they're in there. And uh, they have, Plus the fact, and I, there are other things that happened, when I was doing that, I, I had the high-rise building around the circle. Mm -hmm. People used to come in and look at the crude model that I had. They said, Trevino, what are you smoking? There'll never be any high-rise there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, but what we were trying to do, what I was trying to do, and I had sole control of everything. Uh, we, we were trying to build a more integrated kind of shopping experience bringing, having people that were working there, being able to stay, walk to these restaurants. In fact, I had three overhead bridges. This is good, listen to this, and the story what, of his what, overhead what bridges. What happened was I had the drawings up mm -hmm. and Watson and Thomas were not sure whether that was going to be work. And so the reason that Welton Beckett was hired not because they were good architects, because they had done a freebie for Eisenhower when Mr. Thomas was <laughs> wow. a fundraiser. <laughs> and so what happened... Well, I, the fact there is that the, the, the Irvine Company went to uh, the leasing agents and they said, come on, we can't lease something like that. Go to Welton Beckett. They're ideal shopping center architects. No, They'll do you a shopping no, center no. that will lease. I got that from both sides. No, no. I, I got I, that from I, 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 okay, so I, know it, I know it. Well, well, story, but let me just finish. So what happened was that, uh, I forgot my train of thought. You said about the bridges. the bridges. The bridges. So they brought Mr. Beckett. He was already an old man. Mm -hmm. He brought him down, and I thought I would have no problem, you know, convincing him to build these Ponte Vecchios, as I call it, bridges, and people could walk. And so I, I even did the grading plan. If you, if you go and look at the grading plan of the circle, you'll find that with the Irvine Company, I have all of those raised so that you could come across, clear right. the bridge. I never changed that. They graded that way. Hmm. And so Beckett sat there in his chair, kind of feeble. I hated him. <laughs> and, 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 and he said, oh, those bridges will block the signage of Broadway and of Robinson. That was it. He killed the bridges. Said, you know. I, but but it, it it's they're raised. So if they ever change their mind, oh, it's yeah, ready they're, to go. They're, okay. they're, they're raised. Well, and what's and what's one of the most iconic elements at South Coast Plaza? The bridge. Catherine Gustafson's mm -hmm. Bridge of Gardens connecting yeah. across Bear yeah. Street, and yeah. people yeah. love well, it. Interesting. The, the fashion is set out so much bigger than South Coast. We had four major department stores. 
South Coast opened with two, with, with Sears and with May Company. We had, we had Robinsons, we had Buffums. But what they don't, real, they don't realize is that Mr. Thomas was on the board of Broadway. I don't know if you knew that. He was on, and that's the way, reason that Broadway is there. And the reason that, uh, uh, I could say another reason why certain stores were excluded is because they were Jewish owned. And Mr. Oh boy, Thomas. Now, now we're getting into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this part's I'm, on YouTube. Right. I did not know that. No. Well, what's, so, uh, you know, as I say, one of the things that, that's really interesting to me is that, and you know this more than I do, you know, if you read the, the early theories of Victor Gruen, he wanted shopping centers to be the core of urban centers in what would be suburbia to actually fight against sprawl. Mm -hmm. And people say that later in his career, he, he felt that they hadn't really worked that way, that they'd actually hurt traditional downtowns and created more sprawl. But if he had lived long enough to see Newport Center and the area around South Coast Plaza, I think he would agree that his vision sort of has come true. The, uh, the I, mixed use that you've talked about, the walkability, the, the civic uses, the commercial yeah, uses, I, among with the retail, those are our downtowns. That's exactly how he envisioned you're, it. You're absolutely right. See, when, <coughs> I, when I was in Newport, it's, there was no there there. Mm -hmm. Where, where's Newport Beach? Oh, Lita Isle is this. Corona del Mar, no, no, they don't even associate with Newport. These are different kinds of animals. So there was, Newport didn't have a center. So I felt that, and that's why the names came about. Nobody had anything, Newport any center. input. We had Fashion Island, and then I named everything Newport Center. Oh, and they said, it's they're going to sue you. you. You can't name it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, we could do two shows. Mm -hmm. Let's just close, though, with the thing we had promised our TV audience they mm -hmm. were going to hear. And they heard just a tiny bit, but let's give them a little more. Uh, first, Kedrick, to you, this idea, it, we're now in an age of Amazon. Mm -hmm. People increasingly just shop online. They get everything. We probably get most of what uh, we get a lot of, of stuff too from Amazon that we used to uh, uh, go shopping for. What is what are the challenges for uh, South Coast Plaza and uh, Fashion Island uh, in this environment where many other malls, the B and C malls that Martin referenced, are already closing down? Well, I do think they have to be aware, but. What Amazon has taken away are the commodities primarily, things that maybe you used to go to a department store and buy 20 of them. You can buy them so easily, whether it's underwear or whatever it is. What they can't take away, I don't believe, is the luxury experience. Now the luxury marketers, they have, they're online, you know, they're very much aware of that, but, and you can buy luxury products online, but there's just something about going into the store. So that's number one. Number two is, and everybody talked about this, it's a downtown experience. It's the experience that, even though we don't see it as like being in the middle of Paris or the heart of Barcelona, that's what it is. And you go to both Fashion Island and South Coast Plaza, it's multicultural, it's wealth from across the globe, aesthetically inspired, fashionable folks, folks at the restaurants. It really has all the elements of what a downtown urban experience is and is meant to be. You know, well, and, and, wonder, and that's what though, they have. Let me add. Plus, the shopping centers like Fashion Island have integrated the restaurants exactly. the, and the office buildings, and those add to the luster of yeah, the shopping. What I was going to ask, Martin, is in a way, though, it's, a, it's an experience. Mm -hmm. Can you have the experience uh, without the retail sales? And in other words, maybe increasingly people will go, they'll try things on, and then they'll go online and order it, and that you'll have less cash register transactions, you'll have more restaurants, more entertainment, uh, and uh, maybe, uh, you know, that, that part that yeah. the stores well, begin to shrink. The downtown aspect, 50 years ago when I was writing the news releases with Walton Becker for Fashion Island, they said it will become the downtown of Newport Center, and it has. The restaurants have been very, very important. Both Henry and, uh, and Bren have gone back and forth on the restaurants. And when we think about going out, we live in Newport, when we think about going, we think about what in Fashion Island, where are we going to go? If we go by South Coast, where are we going to go to a restaurant there? So it's really, really you can't good. can't park there. Now the aspect of feeling, <laughs> uh, Saks Fifth Avenue, no, um, one of the department stores, oh, Wilkes Wilshire, it finally opened. Wilkes Wilshire was going to come to uh, Fashion Island, and we did a study about uh, 
would you go to Bulksville? They got a list. We got a list of Bulksville sh shoppers, but downtown Los Angeles and Wilshire Boulevard. And the, the focus study was, would you shop in Fashion Island if Bulksville should open there? The response was no. And why? They said because the saleswomen in Fashion Island in, in, on Wilshire Boulevard are so good, and we know them, and they tell us when we should come in for a certain. So that element of fashion is very, very important. Yeah, that, Working that. with the various people and the people uh, who know you. Uh, I go into Nordstrom, they're in the South Coast. Oh, hello, Mr. Brower. Are you interested in that tuxedo yet? Absolutely fantastic. I don't get that online. Well, I do get that online from Amazon, but not the it's same that way. Sense of, that sort of sense of hospitality, and that's yeah. one of the things that the Sagerstrom's yeah. brought, is they hired a lot of hotel people to work at South Coast Plaza to bring that sense of, of hospitality. But I do think they'll change, just like you said. I think one of the biggest challenges for South Coast Plaza will be what's going to happen to Sears. Sears owns that land. Um, Sears is selling lots of different places. I don't know if they'll sell there, but for the, the family to buy that and then maybe knock it down, yeah, maybe I, make I, it more I, of an yeah. open air, who knows? But So there will be challenges, and I think a lot of it is with the big yeah. box department stores, which ones are going right. to succeed and which ones won't. So may it, not. We'll, we'll watch, and while I think we would all agree that we're probably going to have fewer shopping malls in the future, uh, maybe those that are right at the top tier, like South Coast Plaza and Fashion Island, their challenge will be how do we adapt to maintain that experience right. that people come for. Terrific. Gentlemen, thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.